The silence dropped suddenly. Only the crackling and hissing of damaged wiring continued somewhere in the shuttle's depth. Eric unbuckled the straps and exited the pilot's seat, carefully keeping his balance on the tilted deck. Helga was already standing, both hands resting on the communications desk, looking grimly at the mangled screens. An impressive abrasion on her forehead just below the line of blonde hair was quickly turning dark, but she paid it no mind. Running through the communicator keyboard, she flicked a few switches and frowned. That bad? Eric asked. Helga sighed. The comm is smashed to pieces. I can't get the spare transmitter up and running as soon as I restore backup power, but there is no telling whether it will break through. The radio waves are behaving very strangely here. Eric looked at the screens. Six of the eight were dark. The cameras had obviously crashed on landing. But the last two showed an unimpressive brownish-gray stony desert stretching to the horizon. Are you all right? Eric stepped toward Helga to get a closer look at the abrasion. Helga grimaced. It look worse than it is, she said. It barely caught me. The communicator got the worst of it. Who would have thought that a fire extinguisher ripped loose could have made such a mess? When we'll be back on the Indior? Eric snarled. I'll rip off Jack's hands. It's all right, Cap. I check it out, Cap. All done. He mocked the husky voice of the fat technician from their ship, the research frigate Endeavor. When we went head over heels and that damn cylinder started flying all over the deck, I thought we're done, he said. But what happened? It felt like we hit something. Helga raised her head from the broken communicator. You were checking the control board at that moment, she said. But I think at the very last moment I saw the... She stopped, her eyes widening as she stared at the screens. Her jaw dropped. What? Eric asked. What are you... He turned around and gasped. On the screens was a vast city with towering skyscrapers and the delicate lace of elegant overpasses shining in the brilliant colors of luxurious buildings and lush greenery. I can't believe my eyes, Helga said. Where did all of this came from? Eric squatted down and patted the silver material that paved the street. It feels real, he said. Helga looked back at the shuttle. It lay about 20 feet away, heavily tilted on its port side. Behind it stretched the long furrow plowed by the shuttle during the landing, except it was surrounded not by the lifeless desert, but by the vast sea of lush green grass. The astronauts in light protective suits and breathing masks stood where, with virtually no transition, the fields gave way to the cityscape. Just before the crash, I thought I saw something, Helga said. Though now I'm not sure, she sighed. Eric, we crashed into the huge airship. It appeared on the screens just moments before the collision. Eric stepped to the side and picked a flower with fleshy purple petals from a manicured flower bed. A few drops of thick pearlescent sap dripped from the steam onto the fabric of his glove. The filters of the mask cut off all odors, but somehow Eric was sure the flower exuded a wonderful aroma. A marvelous city that had appeared as if by magic. A city that beckoned, settled here. Except its typical precursor architecture. Helga shook her head. The precursors disappeared hundreds of millions of years ago, 
And this city... The city is in perfect condition, Eric nodded. Not some ancient ruins. You can see that it has been meticulously maintained. But by whom? It's empty. No population, no bots, nothing. Helga pointed to the nearest building with mirrored windows, resembling a frozen steep wave. Do you think they're hiding? she asked. Afraid of us, after the collision. Eric twirled the flower thoughtfully in his hand. Get that communicator back online, he said. Something is wrong. Half an hour later, Eric's uneasy feeling had increased even more. The city was breathtaking in its beauty, grandeur, and meticulous layout, but completely empty. Besides, Eric couldn't get inside any of the building. All the doors and windows were sealed shut. Eric didn't risk breaking a window or a door. Who knows what kind of security systems the precursor builders might have used, if, of course, this was their city, which was hard to believe. Hundreds of millions of years. The short-range radio rumbled in his ear, and Helga's voice said, Eric, I fixed the communicator, and Deaver is on the line. You should listen to this. There was a click, and the anxious voice of Miko Dražić, the frigate's captain, shouted, Eric, get out of there immediately! I was about to check some of the city's outskirts. Forget the outskirts, Dvajic interrupted. It's not a city. Hell, it's not even a planet. Get on the shuttle and get out before it's too late. Several power shields are breached. The third and sixth propulsion units and several auxiliary systems are damaged. Thank God none of the crew were hurt, Dražić said. We were lucky. Eric finished his tonic and placed his glass on a low table. The precursor computer? Dražić nodded. Yes, our primary scanner broke through at the last moment. An AI with a quantum singular core controlling a massive cloud of nanobots, which can create three-dimensional copies of any object. Airships, cities, planets. Or giant squids with tentacles thousands of kilometers long trying to catch the shuttle and frigate flying away from them. But why would he want us? Helga asked. Dražić shrugged. I don't know. Although the precursors disappeared several hundred million of years ago. He must have been very bored. Eric giggled. He was dreaming about some new toys, he said. 